Welcome to the Low Carbon Economy Index discussion. With me in the studio, Andrew Sentence, Senior Economic Advisor to the firm, Jonathan Grant, Director in the Sustainability and Climate Change team. Our topic today, the movement to a low carbon economy, avoiding more than two degrees of warming. Is it a pipe dream or are we on course? Leo, each year uh, we evaluate how much of the global carbon budget has been spent and how much emissions reductions are needed to stay to the two degrees target. Now, if we'd started in 2000, we'd have needed emissions reductions of about 3.7% per year. What we've achieved is only about 0.8% per year. And so because of that lack of progress, we now have to reduce emissions by 5.1% per year, every year from now to 2050. Has that ever been done before? Not since the Second World War. And it looks very unlikely that we'll be able to achieve those targets, uh, those reductions and therefore uh, we're on track for much greater warming than two degrees. So essentially between now and 2050, we've got to do 39 years running, meet a target that we've never really met before. That's right, and even if we were to double the rate of reduction that we're achieving right now, we'd still only be on track for six degrees of warming. So we're looking at a change in either the economy that's needed or business is going to have, have to adapt to How a How many parts world. per million does that translate into? Well, for six degrees, that translates to 1,200 parts per million. And we're trying to get somewhere between 350 and 450. That's right. So we're kind of heading off the carbon cliff, according to this analysis, if the science is right. Yes, that's right. Shell gas. A lot of talk about shell gas. Is it part of the solution? Leo, last year in the US, carbon intensity fell 3.5%. And much of that was due to the increased use of shale gas. Now, shale gas is a transition fuel, which is half the emissions of coal in power generation. But there are three concerns with it. First is the environmental impact of extracting the gas. Second is that it lowers the cost of coal, which drives up coal demand in other countries. And the third is that the increased use of shale gas can actually displace investment in renewables. So it's not the whole answer, but it is part of the transition. Andrew, what does this mean for business? What does this mean for growth? Well, I think for business and economic growth, there's both risk and uh, an opportunity. The risk is that um, we wake up uh, quite dramatically to the need to do much more to get ourselves on the sort of track that Jonathan's talking about. And therefore we see quite significant shifts in policy, say in five or ten years time, um, and business then has to work a lot harder to adjust and the costs... Okay, a sudden to, radical carbon tax, for example. Yes, and the cost to the business and the cost to the economy would be much greater. I think the opportunity is that actually if we think about the next wave of growth, where is it going to come from? It could well come from investment in low carbon technologies and new sources of energy. And we're already seeing some countries beginning to identify that. For example, the Chinese are the, are the major producer of solar panels now. They're interested get in getting into electric cars. And so you're seeing countries begin to recognize that this is a source of growth opportunity as well. Very interesting. Yeah, China, it's 13th five-year development plan, $1.7 trillion into seven strategic sectors of which renewables, clean tech, nano, ICT are paramount. Do you think that is the future economy that both governments and business should pin their, economics futures, uh, their economic futures on? Well, if we're going to make the transition to a low carbon economy, um, particularly in energy and transport, we're going to have to harness these uh, technologies, a whole wide range of technologies to a much greater degree. Um, and when we harness technology, we do create business opportunities. So we've seen some of the technologies begin to emerge, like solar panels, electric cars. Those need to go much further, but we also need other technologies like carbon capture and storage, um, uh, innovations in biofuels, uh, to go much further to take us in the direction that Jonathan's flying. So what I'm hearing that? is well, competitive drivers will dominate. It, that's, uh, hopefully you'll get a number of drivers which will work in the same direction. Uh, both economic signals like carbon pricing, the commitment of governments to move in the same direction, and then countries perhaps competing with each other to be ahead in these low carbon technologies. And as that innovation takes place, so the prices will come down, and then there'll be broader acceptability of those uh, low carbon technologies, and that's critical if governments are to be able to implement these policies rapidly. Key messages for the viewers? Well, I think that unless there's a radical policy shift, we are on track for a for a warming world, and I think business needs to prepare for that. Andrew? I think there are short and medium term risks and opportunities 
The risk is that we have bigger costs for business. The opportunity is that we can get an investment wave of low carbon technology. Andrew, Jonathan, and to all of you who've been watching the Low Carbon Economy Index discussion, thank you very much.